Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we have a little bit of a special review. This one is going to round off the Japanese mini-series that I've been doing for you over the last couple of weeks. So it's been great to be over here for Christmas 2019 and for New Year 2019-2020. Got to spend a little bit of time with my son, spend a bit more time with Michiko's family and my family also came over to Japan to meet their grandson and nephew. So that was really, really cool. And when it comes to the channel I got to try some really really nice beers this time from some breweries that I hadn't visited in quite a little while and uh, I also got to review some very nice sakes as well and you'll see more sake reviews appear periodically on the channel over the next little while but I really hope you've enjoyed this little Japanese mini series that I've done for you and uh, you know there will be more Japanese beer reviews to come over the next few months and I will be back in Japan around late June or uh, early July 2020 so definitely more Japanese beer reviews to come but for this particular review I saved a special beer and I think this one might be the best beer that I'll review on this little mini series actually this is the second of two co of two collaboration beers that were done between my one of my favorite breweries here in Japan and also the first brewery that I ever encountered from Chicago over in Illinois in America so for the Japanese side of things we're going to return to Nagano prefecture and we're having a taste of another beer from Shiga Kogan beer Tamamura Honten the parent company of course the sake brewery and this is a collaboration that they did with Pipeworks Brewing company from Chicago in Illinois over in the US. This particular beer is called the Omake and it's a barrel aged imperial milk stout coming in at 12% ABV. A few videos ago you would have seen me review the UFO, the Unidentified Fermented Object, which was an imperial milk stout at 9% with uh, blueberries and raspberries and also some uh, Ethiopian coffee roasted by trunks here in Japan. But this particular beer is um, it's, it's made from the kind of base beer of that if you like before they added the coffee and raspberries and things like that so um, this one as I say comes in at 12% ABV and apparently it's barrel aged in Ichiro malt barrels from the Chichibu distillery who were the first distillery to open up in Japan after the uh, the law changes actually so pretty cool this one but the beer itself is called Omake and from what Michiko tells me, omake is a term that's kind of similar to what we would say in English as like buy one get one free. If you do one thing, you get another thing as a bonus. So this beer, as I said to you, is made from the kind of base beer of UFO. They took a portion of it and put it in barrels to age and uh, got this beer. But this one was released as a special edition in late 2019. There was only like a thousand or so bottles of this one um, that were released. And I bought this one from liquor shop Asahiya in Taishi Yamaichi here in Osaka. Koji and Rico run the, Rika run the shop of course and uh, they are pretty much my Japanese beer dealer so as always their Facebook page is in the video description below so make sure you check them out if you find yourself here in Osaka. They kept this one aside for me along with a few of the other beers you've seen or most of the other beers you've seen um, that I've reviewed here on the channel this time so make sure you give them your patronage if you find yourself here but very excited to review this one this I think will top off a lot of the beers that I've um, this will top off the series basically of all these nice Japanese beers that I've reviewed for you over the last couple of weeks. So um, yeah, as always, looking forward to this one, but let's talk a little bit about the history of the breweries before we taste the beer. So if you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery websites, the link to my other reviews that I've done, both from Tamamura Haunting and the Yoshiga Kogan Beer Range and Pipeworks Brewing Company from over in America. Hopefully I can add more to those lists at some point soon. There's all the usual social media down there as well. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the American beers that I've reviewed for you and another one for all the Japanese beers that I've reviewed for you. Um, both of those are being added to whenever I get the opportunity, and this beer will appear in both since it's half and half. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the channel and the support that you show me is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about the breweries then, on to Tamamura Honten and the Shiga Kogan beer range first since these guys are the home brewery. So Tamamura Honten, as I've told you before, are based in Yamanuchi in Nagano Prefecture in Japan, which is a few hundred kilometers to the northwest of the capital city, Tokyo. And this area 
is known as Tohoku and it's very famous for its ski slopes, its hot springs and also its Japanese sake which I do recommend that you check out. So the Tamamura Honten company began brewing sake back in 1805 and this is a kind of typical story for a lot of Japanese craft brewers actually. There's a good few of them started off um, as a result of you know sake brewers just wanting to try something new but you will actually get a lot of new companies as well. The strangest one I've found in Japan so far has been one that started in the back of a furniture shop but you know that's just Japan they're very very innovative here and um, but they began brewing beer quite recently under the name Shiga Kogan beer which uh, translates into English as like Shiga Heights beer or Shiga Mountain beer you know kind of similar but they started brewing their beers first back in 1998 but it did take them a little bit of time to get that going and these days they're also producing wine as well so the current head brewer is Sato Ego he joined the company in 2003 and the idea to kind of brew beer full-time really came when the number of skiers visiting the resort began to dwindle and so in May of 2004 they applied for their brewing license officially and they received it four months later. They brought in their brewing equipment, they trained for a week at a brewery in Kyushu before beginning their own activities and they only had a consultant to help them and since then from their kind of humble beginnings with brewing they've gone on to become one of the most decorated craft breweries in Japan. So Tamamura Honten also produced their own hops, their own sake rice, barley, buckwheat, blueberries, raspberries and a few other things as well and they actually have their own hop variety which is called the Shinzu Wazi and it's a hybrid between the Czech Sats hop and a local Japanese variety and they originally used it as a bittering hop but um, these days they're also using it as an aroma hop as well and quite often in the IPAs that uh, Shiga Kogan beer are producing you'll find it in there too and it really gives their beers a little bit of a unique kind of uh, taste to it as well but these guys also like to combine a few of the sake brewing techniques with um, craft beer brewing too which is, is really quite interesting so their beers are always very unique one that I would really recommend you check out is the, uh, the House IPA and that's one that I still need to review for you here on the channel but it's a really really solid example example of uh, a Japanese craft brewed IPA. It's, it's really is a very very nice beer. Um, but the brewery also has two tasting rooms as well. These are known as Tepper rooms. They've got one at the brewery itself and also one at the Shiga Kogan Ichinose Hotel Shali Shiga and um, hopefully I can get along to one of those, probably the one at the brewery and uh, you know do a little out and about video for you that would be an awesome thing to do. Maybe I can even convince um, Casey and Eric from, Sh from um, Sotogami Akihabira to come out of retirement and join me there. That might be something that will come to fruition in the next couple of years. But the artwork that you'll find on these Shiga Kogan beers is designed by Tanaka Noriyuki, who is pretty damn talented at what he does, I have to say. You'll, you know, um, the Shiga Kogan beers are very um, distinctive, if you like. They often come with that sort of sandy coloured label and uh, the Tamamura Honten dragon on them, of course. So check out this brewery if you get the chance. In my opinion, the Tamamura Mura Honten and the Shiga Kogan beers are really up there with some of the best that you'll find from the likes of Scandinavia and um, the rest of Europe and America. They're producing some very, very interesting stuff and they're not afraid to try different styles either actually. They're pretty damn good when it comes to barrel aging too in my opinion. Probably the best beers that I've had from them so far. The Takashi Imperial Stout was pretty special. Um, any of their IPAs that you try are usually pretty good. Sono Dew is one that springs to mind. That's always been a really solid West Coast IPA. Um, but yeah, just my basic message of this is check out Shiga Kogan beer if you get the chance. You will not be disappointed with beers from these guys. So um, yeah, that's all you need to know about Shiga Kogan beer and Tamamura Honten. If you want to learn more, of course, you can check out the brewery website in the description below. Um, it's a little bit more of an old school brewery. This one, there's a good blog in there where Sato Ego keeps you up to date with all the different things that he's brewing. So that's worth keeping an eye on. And um, they, I don't, they don't have too big a presence on social media, but uh, check it out anyway. And uh, if you want to learn more of course about their beers you can check out the brewery website or you can look at Rate Beer and Untapped to see all the different things that they've done but pretty damn prolific these guys there's a lot of different beers from them and they do have a core range as well as various different special beers that come out so um, yeah let's move on to the American side of things then on to Pipeworks Brewing so as I told you at the start of the video Pipeworks Brewing are based in Chicago in Illinois in America and they were founded back in 2012 by BJ Olson and Garrett Lewis so 
that the two men were home brewers and they had met when they worked together at West Lakeview Liquors in Chicago and then later they were educated in larger scale brewing by Brauerei de Struise in Oostletren in Belgium who are a pretty well known brewery actually. You'll see me review a special beer from them at some point in the very, very near future. But in 2011 they launched a Kickstarter campaign to raise the $30,000 that they needed to fund their own brewery and they founded it in the Buckton district of Chicago or Bucktown. Not sure exactly how to pronounce that. But in January of 2013, they won the Rate Beer Award for the Best New Brewery of 2012. And as of 2015, they've opened up a second brewery at West McLean Avenue, which is where today all of their production takes place. I believe the old site has been demolished and they're going to build like apartments and stuff on it now and um, but they also introduced their beers in cans they have the tall boy cans that a lot of american breweries have these days and uh, for a period of time they retained their old brewery to brew sour beers and things like that and um, but as of december 2019 when i'm filming this review for you they've produced just under 450 different types of beer and again this is a brewery that you can pretty much pick a style from that you like and you will get a very good beer out of it actually. My first um, introduction to Pipeworks Brewing was from Jesse Holden who I met in Copenhagen and then in Chicago once again. He gave me a lovely beer tour around there, which was awesome. He sent me the Blood of the Unicorn because he knew that I liked Imperial Reds. Also Lizard King and uh, I think it was Ninja vs Unicorn, which were all very, very nice beers actually. So hopefully in the future I can get out to Chicago again and visit them and maybe we can film a little video at the Pipeworks Brewing Tap Room actually. So um, yeah, definitely something to keep an eye on in the future and a big shout out to Jesse once again since this is a Pipeworks beer. I've had a few other beers involving these guys um, because they came over and collaborated with uh, Brekeriet um, in Skåne in the south of Sweden where I live and I think they also did a collaboration that I reviewed with Amar Brykhus who are one of my favourite ones from over in Denmark as well. But a very solid brewery these guys and probably one of the better known Chicago breweries in Europe actually. Their beers are they're fairly easy to get if you know a good beer shop in Europe these days actually so check them out if you get the chance and like I say hopefully I can get over to Chicago again at some point but um, yeah that's all that uh, I can really tell you about Pipeworks Brewing for Company for the moment if you want to learn more of course check out the brewery website you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages to see all the different beers that they've done so um, yeah let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on so as you can see the artwork on this one is very similar to the um, the UFO, the Unidentified Fermented Object. Um, it's pretty cool, I have to say, but like I mentioned earlier, this one is a 12% uh, barrel-aged Imperial Milk Stout, a byproduct of UFO. As I said to you, Omaki kind of means like buy one, get one free. Um, it's kind of similar, actually. It's the sort of same theme as the Iseki Sancho that I reviewed for you a little while ago. Iseki Sancho was, you know, you get two benefits from doing... Or Iseki Nicho, Nicho was the one where you get two benefits from one thing, but Sancho was because they forgot about these barrels in the brewery. So that was pretty cool. One of the things you'll also notice about this beer, if you look at the back of it, you'll see that there's a little 12% sticker on there because apparently he opened up the barrel and tested it after a year and a half. Uh, of barrel aging and it was only 11% but then when he actually went to bottle it it had gone up to 12% so um, yeah you'll notice that little kind of sticker on the back there but you can see the two brewery symbols there there's Pipeworks Brewing Company and there is the Tamamura Haunting uh, Dragon there I'm not sure why they haven't made another symbol for Shiga Kogan beer to be honest with you but I do like the Tamamura Haunting Dragon and you can also see that blue bottle cap there, the Tamamura Haunting thing too. Um, as I mentioned to you, the barrels that this one is aged in come to you from the Chichibu Distillery, which was one of the first ones, if not the first one, to open up in Japan once again after uh, the laws were changed. The alcohol laws changed at the end of the uh, the 1990s. For beer it was like 1996 and I think for spirits it was a little bit later. And it was all to do with the taxation and uh, the volumes that you could produce. But a lovely presented beer, this one, um, it looks like a, uh, it actually looks like a, a pair of hands doing the little heart shaped thing, like this actually. But um, without further ado then, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting. I'm really, really curious to see how this beer turns out. An Imperial Milk Stout at 12% ABV, barrel aged. Um, the last one, as I told you, the UFO came in at 9% ABV and uh, they added in Ethiopian coffee beans, Arachi, 
was the variety if I remember correctly um, and that was uh, roasted by Trunks Coffee here in Japan and they also had homegrown blueberries and raspberries from the uh, Shiga Kogan farm actually so um, yeah interesting that but this one is you brewed use or was made using part of the um, the thing before they put it in the, the, the you know the fermenters to age and stuff like this they separate a little bit of it to barrel age so um, yeah as you can see and as you would expect from an imperial stout this one has poured a lovely dark ebony rosewood colour if I put it up to the light it does have a little bit of a kind of Coca-Cola coloured edge to it, which is kind of what you'd expect. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head, but you can see the head has just faded away to be a very, very thin foamy layer. And to be honest, when it comes to a barrel-aged beer and it comes to one that's 12% ABV, that's not surprising at all. You know, these beers find it very difficult to retain their head. But, you know, overall, it looks pretty nice. There was about a quarter finger of a frothy, quite dark, beige tan head in this one. So, um, yeah, let's have a little look at the aroma then and see what we can get out of this. Oh, geez. Right. Straight away, I can tell you that this is a beautiful, beautiful beer. Um, I've always been a little bit torn when it comes to barrel aging because it can take the mouthfeel of a beer down a little bit, I've noticed that um, but in some cases the infused flavours you get out of it really compensate for it but in some other beers I think it doesn't quite compensate for it but knowing Shiga Kogan beer and Tamamura Honten I think they probably will have had a really really nice um, a really really nice take on this one actually um, these guys know what they're doing when it comes to barrel aging. I would really recommend as well the Takashi Imperial Stout. That's a, a beautiful beer that's a little bit probably more kind of straight up than this. If you like a nice roasty toasty stout, Takashi Imperial Stout is worth trying. But straight away with this one, you get the lovely kind of oaky notes out of this. The whiskey really comes out of this beer. You can smell that whole infused kind of thing. Definitely some sort of brown sugary notes there. The whiskey that comes out of this to me is quite leathery and also brown sugary which is quite nice as I've always told you you get a little bit of a kind of with whiskies you always get kind of peaty smoke you get more citrusy whiskies or you get the more kind of brown sugary leathery and woody ones but you get I would say this one is a mix of brown sugary and uh, and leathery for me I love the aroma that comes out of this beer very very infused actually and you can tell straight away that it's a big boozy beast of a beer so some real sort of treacle and molasses coming in on top of that and um, you're not really getting any hoppy notes out of this beer. There's maybe a teeny bit of earthiness and a teeny bit of grassiness, to be honest with you. But if a beer is aged, I think it said it was about two years that this one had been aged for. Um, you're not going to get a lot of hoppy quality out of it. There is a little element of almost peatiness to this, but it's very kind of subdued. And it's an almost, it almost comes across as being a very dry peatiness. Um, I love smoky things. Um... You know, it was the German Rauch beers that really got me into craft beer in the first place, but I've always told you that Scottish or whiskey type smokiness, it's a lot more grassy and earthy, and you get a little bit of that out of um, out of this beer. Um, it's really it, nice. It does have that little touch of peatiness in there, but it's quite minimal. This is really more of a leathery, brown sugary type whiskey, as I'm saying, that this one, it's obviously been aced that. But they char the barrels as well, and you do get a little bit of that kind of charred quality out of this beer too. Um, in terms of red fruitiness and things like that, because you're always going to get a bit of red fruit out of um, these beers, I mean there's a little touch of a, a like a blackberry blackcurrant type thing with this. Um, there's maybe a little bit of a juicy figgy note as well, um, some kind of candied red fruits. Um, it's a, got a little teeny bit of sharpness to it on the nose, but I mean otherwise it's all about that big kind of infused flavour. There's not really any, um, there, there's a little touch of chocolate to this one. There's some really oily caramelised like treacle molasses in there and otherwise it's all about those big whiskey infused aromas that I've been talking about. Um, the aroma of this beer is absolutely beautiful I have to say and it's it really is very different from the from the UFO. Koji told me that this one sold out very very quickly so I got the last bottle that he had in the shop because I messaged him and asked him to keep it for me um, but you know this is a beer I think he said there was only like 
was it 1100 or was it 1800 bottles something like that you know this one was very very limited actually so I'm quite lucky to be able to review this one for you here on the channel a very good beer to finish off this Japanese mini series as I said so um, yeah definitely cool to see a Japanese brewery um, going with pipeworks as well of all things so yeah take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this beer before you get stuck into it. I'm really, really curious to see how this one turns out. I've never had a barrel-aged milk stout before. You, do get, you don't get too much of the lactose qualities out of this beer. And it was the same with the UFO, actually. It had a lovely smoothness to it. The lactose was really giving you the smoothness rather than contributing too much to the flavour. It was all a mouthfeel kind of thing. So we'll talk about that when we taste this beer. But let's have a go of this one then and see how we get on. This one is the Omaki. A 12% barrel aged imperial milk stout from Tamamura Hontin's Shiga Kogan beer range from Yamanuchi, Nagano Prefecture in Tohoku in Japan, brewed in collaboration with Pipeworks Brewing Company from Chicago in Illinois in America, and barrel aged of course in uh, Ichiro malt casks from Chichibu Distillery here in Japan too. Let's get stuck into this one, a 12% barrel aged imperial milk stout. Slanja, Skull, Kampai, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, Japanese mini-series. Cheers. Yeah, that is a beautiful, beautiful beer. You know, these guys, Shiga Kogan beer, I said it with the Iseki Sancho, you know, every so often you come across beers where you're just like, well, damn, you know. This is another one. These guys are very, very capable when it comes to, to barrel aging. I've told you in these videos before, the Japanese, they spend a lot of time perfecting things. Um, sometimes they overdo it, but when you have things like this, you can see why they do it. Um, it's th This is a beautiful, beautiful beer, I have to say. You know, I take my hat off to, uh, to Shiga Kogan beer on this one. I said the same about Iseki Sancho. UFO was good. But it's not on the same level as this. Um, you know, Sono Ju, I always talk about, has been a, one of the best Japanese IPAs. This one really takes above. Takashi Imperial Stout that these guys have done is an awesome beer. But this, again, is next level. This is a very, very good beer. If somehow you come across this one, I highly recommend that you do. I will say straight away, it would be an absolute sin if Shiga Kogan don't do this beer again in a couple of years. They could make it like a five year uh, re-release or something like that. It would be an absolute sin if they don't do this beer again because it really is that good. Thumbs up to both breweries involved here. Pipeworks and Shiga Kogan beer, you know, you expect good things from them, but this is really damn good, I have to say. Mm. And as I said before, I've always questioned whether barrel aging is necessary. Um, I think with the milk, the Imperial Milk Stouts, if this one is anything to go by for this as a sort of sub-style, or a sub-sub-style as it could be, um, you know, there's a lot of positives from this one actually. Barrel aging, I think having that more infused mouthfeel really works with this actually. So let's just try and break down the flavour of this one then. This is, this is a ridiculously good beer. Um, so straight away then, Middle of your palate, you can feel the woody qualities, that nice, smooth, oaky, woody quality, that blankets the middle of your tongue. On top of that, you can really feel the lactose coming out here. The lactose really just adds to the smoothness that you get out of this beer. It's almost like the woody and milky qualities are kind of working together in this one, which is, uh, which is really quite nice. Um, it, it's a really interesting sort of tandem, if you like, um, but the further you go into the aftertaste, you can feel it dry out a little bit, and that's where I feel some of the more, kind of, there, there's a little touch of a kind of charry quality to this one, but it, it's quite minimal, it's just nice and subtle, and it complements everything else, but in the middle of the palate, you get some of the more brown sugary and kind of leathery elements um, out of this beer, and it's really... Um, it, you know, it, the way that everything goes together in this one, this is one of these beers where it's all about how it fits together and the level of complexity with this one is just awesome, I have to say. That's what makes this beer what it is. I wish I could take a bottle of this back to share with the other beer tubers, like a bottle share or something, um, because it's this is 
you know, this is arguably one of the best Imperial Stouts I've reviewed on the channel, and I mean, I've tried some awesome Imperial Stouts um, over the last years, um, but this one definitely has to be in the top five, perhaps. You know, probably even be top three. Who knows? It's difficult to keep track when you're getting when you're lucky enough to review all these beers that I get. Um, but this is this is ridiculously good. If this it is an absolute sin if they don't do this beer again. But in the middle of your palate, as I say, you get that nice brown sugary note, and it's quite a treacly molasses type thing. And as you move out from the center of the palate, it gradually gets a little bit lighter and more kind of honeycomb or caramelly like. There's not really any biscuity notes to this one. This beer is too kind of thick to give you that slightly more grainy quality you'd expect of a biscuity note. Um, on, underneath the, the kind of brown sugary notes, there is an element of chocolatiness to this one, but it's actually like quite a dry, almost powdered chocolate, and I'd say that it's kind of mid-level on the kind of cocoa range as well. I mean, it's maybe about a 50 or 60% cocoa, so there is an element of milkiness in there, but again, that could be the... Um, sort of lactosey qualities playing a role in this one. So to take this from the base up, just to kind of clarify a little bit, I'd say um, you've got woodiness, you've got lactosiness, then you've got a kind of chocolatey quality, that dry powdery chocolate note there. You've got some kind of lighter, um, more caramelly, wafery type um, brown sugars there and then in the very centre of your palate you've got the thicker sort of treacly molasses note to this one but the further you go into the aftertaste you can feel the centre of your palate just dry out a little bit and that's when you start to get some of these kind of charry um, notes out of this beer. This is just ridiculous though, this is an awesome, awesome uh, imperial stout this is this is this is this would be hard to beat by some of the best american and um you know european breweries actually and for it to come from a japanese brewery albeit in collaboration with an american brewery is is pretty impressive this is arguably along this and the Iseki sancho these two are probably the best beers that i've tried from uh, from japan so far so make of that what you will it's just a shame that you know probably these beers are not going to be in production again but it goes to show you what the quality um of beer is in japan these days you've got some awesome things available here very very capable breweries so yeah um and the mouth feels just crazy on this. Um, on the hoppy side of things then, as I said, when this is, a two, uh, I think it's a two-year barrel-aged imperial stout, you're not going to get much in the way of hoppiness out of this. But you do pick up a little bit of earthiness on the side, on the back sides of the palate there. There is a little bit of that remaining. And as you come further forward along the, uh, the sides of the palate, you can feel that um, just, it just spreads forward a little bit. There's a teeny, tiny, tiny little bit of floralness on the front corners of the palate. You can feel that. And then round the very front curve of the tongue, it's got just a little bit of lighter grassiness to it. Then behind the front curve of the palate, you've got a nice oily bubble where the juicy, fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer. And the fruitiness is quite interesting in this one as well. So yeah, when you take this in, it really is quite sort of, it comes in and it's a little bit sharper and then it just becomes a lot more juicy and more mellow the further that you go into the flavour. When you take it in, it's almost got just a little bit of a kind of cherry or plummy sort of sharpness to it. It's not tart in any way, but it's just got a little bit of sharpness to it. But then as you go further into the, the aftertaste with this one, it's really got like a sort of, sultana type quality to it like a boozy like almost like brandy infused sultana something like that and um, but then the further you go into the aftertaste you'll get little bits of a figgy note a kind of there's really a dainty kind of pruny thing that lingers in this one as well but you do get some of the more um you do get a little bit of a figgy blackberry-ish type juiciness to the this beer the further you go into the aftertaste too but I would say it's mainly these more kind of dry sultana raisiny type flavours it's not quite as sharp as raisins right enough sultanas is probably a better descriptor but it's um, the fruitiness in this one is really interesting as well this beer really does dry out a little bit more the further you go into the palate it, you get some of those more cherry elements like I say but you get all the woodiness and the brown sugars and the leathery elements of the whiskey just kind of lingering in this one and um, as I say this is one of the best imperial stouts I've reviewed on the channel this one just really 
ticks all the boxes for me. Bear in mind when I'm saying this that, you know, beer is always subjective and different people like different things, but this one ticks a hell of a lot of boxes for me and um, it's one of the two best beers that I've had from Japan so far and both of them, I would say, have come, you know, both of them have come from Shika Kogan beer. So, um, yeah, try this brewery if you get the chance. And Pipeworks, we know these guys are a really damn solid American brewery. They've got a hell of a reputation to to carry so yeah this this beer is crazy I've really enjoyed tasting this one for you pardon me it's giving me a little bit of gas now but um yeah in terms of the mouthfeel and this is one of the things that this beer really stands out on um definitely full bodied carbonation is very very smooth in this one that's what you'd expect it does dry out a little bit more the further you go into the aftertaste. It's got a degree of silkiness to it, but at the same time it's quite a dry silkiness. That's what makes the mouthfeel of this one unique. As I say, it dries out the further you go into the aftertaste. In terms of IBUs, this one's a bit difficult to place because it is quite smooth. I would reckon this is about 60 or maybe 70 IBUs. Got to be something like that. Um, although, I think 60. I think 60 is a fair estimate for this one. The malt base, like I say, is really smooth in this one. There's a degree of sweetness to it, but the, the sort of infused flavours you get from the barrel aging take that back a little bit and dry the beer out. There's a teeny little bit of a hoppy presence to this one, um, but you've also got that nice kind of juicy fruitiness there. A bit sharp in the beginning, but it really becomes a bit more juicy and more mellow the further that you go into the, the flavour of this. But this is a ridiculously good beer and one that I highly, highly recommend that you try if you get the chance. This is, as I say, one of the best beers that I've reviewed from Japan so far and I'm glad that I kept this to, uh, to round off the Japanese series for you. I'll definitely be keeping the bottle of this one for decoration, I have to say. So, um, yeah, let's just leave it at that for this beer. This one is the Omaki, um, a 12% barrel aged Imperial Milk Stout from Shiga Kogan Beer, brewed by Tamamura Honten in Yamanuchi ya, uh, in Nagano Prefecture here in Japan in the Tohoku region, and uh, Pipeworks Brewing Company from Chicago in Illinois. A great beer to round off this little Japanese mini series for you, and a great way to round off my uh, trip to Japan this time. So, yeah, like I say, I hope you've enjoyed my take on this beer been awesome to review this one. Thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are, both from Tamamura Haunting, Shiga Kogan Beer and Pipeworks Brewing Company. I'll no doubt return to these breweries at some point in the fairly near future. Um, check out my social media, check out both of these breweries on social media and uh, try their beers of course. And uh, thank you again for watching. Until the next time, slander just now and I'll catch you guys soon. An awesome, awesome beer this. One of the best that I've ever reviewed from Japan. Until the next time, slander just now and I'll catch you guys later. Do also give me some recommendations of more barrel aged Imperial Milk Stouts. I think this is a style, a sub sub style that I need to uh, investigate a little bit more. Slander, skull, kampai, cheers.